G'day! So I'm Boneless117 and today I'm going to show you how I start my cities in City Skyline. Now this is pretty much approachable on both console and the PC, but I'll be using a PC in this example. I've disabled all different assets and mods so you can do this completely vanilla without any problem. So first off we choose a map. Uh, again, to make it a bit easier I'm just going to show you exactly how to do it from uh, the OG, the original ones. And let's just choose... Like it doesn't really matter, let's do green planes and just start that one. Okay, so the game itself should start paused. If it doesn't, please pause it, otherwise you can start losing money pretty quickly. And also time is wasted, you don't want to do that. So you get a lovely welcome message which we can just nick off. And then I can explain uh, what we currently have on the map here. So every city starts off with uh, this general square. And you always get uh, an inter uh, intersection beginning from where the highway is. Here we have this intersection moving through, and you have two two lanes. So one's uh, coming into your city and the other one's leaving your city. So what we want to do, so from there we also have, you'll also always have some water, otherwise it'll make your life very difficult when you try to do some water, uh, some plumbing. And yeah, it's from the very beginning. What you want to do is you select a road tool. Doesn't really matter. You just want to build one unit worth of road and then build it by doing this, you actually unlock the everything else we need. So power, water, and some more roads as well. It gets unlocked when you, when you build your first road. But we're going to delete it straight away because we don't really need it. And we'll be work, working on something a bit further. A bit. Uh, we're working on that a little bit later on. So the first thing I like to do is look at the water situation and then deal with that first. Mainly because if you, if you don't, it's going to make your life a little difficult, especially if when you run out of money. You've only got a fair amount. You've only got a... Uh, uh, a small budget realistically when you're trying to start off the city so there's two different things you want to start off with you have a water pumping station and a water drain pipe when you place these you can only place these up against the up against the um uh, up against a river or a body of water so the game itself will just snap it against it snap it on for you so now something to note is that you do have a pollution ring around uh, like a noise pollution ring around these things. Apparently they get quite loud. So you don't want to be placing these up against any residential zones. So when you're placing your water, it's really important to make sure you note the arrows. This is the direction that water is flowing and you want to place your intake and extake appropriately. So I'm going to use my water, uh, water pumping station at the very top of, the, top of it and my water drain pipe at the very bottom. If you don't, what would happen? If you reverse this, you'll actually find out that you'll have your um, your sewage, which is your water uh, your water drain uh, drain pipe, will actually start pumping all the way down, flow the flow the stream, uh, follow the stream, and then your pumping station will pick it up and it'll make everyone sick, and it's not a very pleasant experience. So once we've placed these down, we need to grab some piping. Now uh, each each of these devices actually has like a little circle attached to it. So this is where we can just snap onto our, our pipes and I'm just going to connect the two. So now these two are connected by pipes. So now that we've got a water situation, the next thing is get some power. Now, what I like to start off with the wind turbines. Um, one, they're cheap and two, they're actually pretty pretty easy and pretty quick to set up. So when you select it, when you select the wind turbines, it actually uh, it changes the overlay of the map and uh, the darker the area, the darker the blue, at the area it actually shows you where it's going to be where the wind turbines are going to be the most uh, effective so at a maximum you can see here that they can get a maximum oh, can I get it? eight megawatts um, and then if you go to the light areas you start getting a bit it becomes less efficient there's less wind to worry about there's less wind for it actually works so it doesn't so it performs worse what what I'm going to do in this case I'm just going to build one over here I'm actually going to build two side by side and then I'm going to turn one off now the reason for this is because I'm trying to manage a budget here and it's a bit difficult sometimes to um, have two running especially and you want to try to save as much uh, as much money as you can um, when you're first starting off. Now now that we have the power option selected you'll see these these uh, blue grids, blue spheres uh, around, um, around your items. This is how much, this is a, basically your power zone. This is where you need, uh, where each device will start, um, each item will um, where they need power. So what we'll do here is we're actually going to connect some uh, power lines. I'm going to build across. Come across 
here and just so we can start our city to be prepared. Now, um, because we have a power line coming through this blue section here, as you can tell, what that, that is going to give supply power to anything within that blue, line, blue outline. So we're going to do the same thing this side. I don't, now, notice I don't have to get right up to it, I just have to be within that within that sphere. So now that we've now that these two are connected, which is good, what we want to do now is you want to consider start building our city. So, to start this one, now we're going to go to the our first interchange and where the entrance of the of the highway is, and we're going to use the one way the the two the two lane one way roads. And what we're going to do is we're going to start uh, we're going to start off in direction. Now the game does actually a pretty bad job at explaining this, but every single section or click that you hear is actually one unit of um, it, it's one weld unit. So when you come across and you see these lines which I'm approaching to now, this one here, that's actually 10, 10 units in length. So if we start, as an example, I'll show you. Now we're at 10, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. We're halfway through, another line appears. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. That is 20 world units, 20 units across. And now that we've actually built a road, we can actually see all these individual squares. Now if you, you can count them, but you can leave the lines itself. will make it a bit easier for you. But now that we've actually, uh, now that we've placed our road, what we can do is we we want to um, now we've got a road coming in. We want to get the road coming out. So the game does a good job of giving these guidelines. And again, all of these circles here are actually ten world units um, for it. So what we'll do is we'll get to the end and just drag the direction into the outgoing. So now we have an incoming and outgoing. This icon here just tells you that hey, I'm not actually connected to anything. Uh, I'm a bit of a dead end. No one can move anywhere. So what I'll do is I actually extend this out more. Uh, further, 10 more units. Um, so, so what I've done is I've extended this side and dragged it from left, uh, from uh, right to left in here. Now it actually comes up with this arrow, uh, this arrow again, or the icon, and that's because I've, I've dragged it the wrong direction. And so the, so the game itself thinks I'm trying to move it to the, the traffic flow to the left when it needs to go to the right, which is okay. You just go to the upgrade tool and then you, on the PC you right click, and on the console you can actually change it to uh, the change direction field. And now it's all correct. So what we'll do is we'll go back to get off that tool. So now that we have our roads coming in, which is now 30 units apart, we're just going to join, join the roads together. So that just it tells us, no, uh, nicks that off a little bit. All right, so we still have $46,000 left. Okay, so the way that traffic flow, the next thing to do is obviously, uh, the next thing we need to do is we need to look at the, um, the on and off ramps for our uh, industrial zones and our commercial zones. Now, City Skylines approaches has an approach to traffic like you would in real life. Whereas if you had a 90 degree angle here, it slows traffic down because the traffic needs a stop and needs a slow down to come around a corner. So what we want to do instead of doing this, we want to do 90 degree angles. So uh, this way here, it gets the fastest moving action. So it's less it's less turning the traffic needs to do. So it just increases your uh, increases the flow of traffic um, for your game. Now, the easiest way to do that is you draw 10 unit world units, 10 units across, and then on a 45 degree angle, you can tell by the little degree section there, you draw it back, and then we continue 10 across again, and then we delete this section. So now we've got a nice 45 degree angle turn instead of a sharp 90 degree, and then we can fix this up in the same direction. And what we'll actually do, we'll upgrade this right here to, to a single a single line. So now that we have traffic going in, what we want to do is we want to set up um, we want to set up some uh, some industrial zones. So I've got 10 world units in. You should go 20 across, but this map doesn't actually give me enough. So 10 will be fine. I'm just going to drop it down another 20, another 20, and then match it uh, match it back up. So we have a loop. And what I'll do is I'll just also do a cross section and then connect it back up to here. So what we've done here is we've got traffic coming down. So traffic can now come into the city. Use this one uh, one way uh, lane to come into our industrial zone, which they can go to wherever they need to. And if one, they want to leave the city, they'll come out this side and then through the intersections and up through and up and exit the city. So what I'll do now is we're actually going to do the same thing on this side. I made a mistake there. We're going to do the same thing on this side. Uh, this allows us to another 10 more units. This allows us to actually allow traffic to uh, 
to free it like again the same the same thing we want we want to happen here so uh what we have going here is so if someone's come from the to the residential side they can come down and then around to residential and if that's someone wants to leave from the residential side they don't have to go all the way down and around here we just want to give them the quickest access to to leave so we could do exactly the same thing here so now we have now I, I'll, I'm a bit of a symmetrical person. It's the reason why I made this symmetrical at the very beginning. But what we need to do now is now that we've figured out a little bit of road network, we need to do our water pipes. Now water pipes again work by a radius. So anything within the radius, uh, the blue radius, will receive water. So it also means we don't have to do things like this to do it because it's it's redundant because we've already got we've already got water coming through the radius. So what I'll actually do is I'm going to do it through my main street. And now I can see that if I build within this radius here, it's all going to have water, which is exactly what I'm going to do. Next thing I'm going to do is going to do power. Now I've already set up a power line here, so I'll just drag it across. It doesn't really matter. And come across. I mean, such a pretty entrance. So what we do now is every single, just like these buildings here, whenever you start, whenever a building starts popping up, it needs it's going to show a blue radius for their uh, for how much for where they get their power from. So we need to uh, we need to make sure we're, we're pre uh, prepared for that. Now, probably something to mention early on is that if you if you build like a power line on any of these squares um, that we're actually trying to build houses on, obviously that a house won't build. So to be cautious about that. What I would do is I'm just going to hit the two corners here. So that way there, when I when we plop it, plop down a residential zone, I'll make sure there's enough power here, which is what we're going to do now. So your different zonings, in case you don't know, you have your residential, which is just your housing, uh, your commercial, that's your different types of shops, and then you have your industrial, this is where all, you, um, uh, all of your uh, products gets uh, gets placed. So if you think about it this way here, residential is where people live, uh, commercial is where people shop, and then the industrial zone is where, where all your pollution is going to be. So this is the reason why we set up uh, our industrial zone away from a residential zone. So placing down your uh, placing down zones is pretty simple. Click on the icon you want. Now it automatically sets the fill bucket, and you just click on the areas, and it drops down. We do the same thing with the residential zone, um, which is good. And then what we want to do is we're actually if we use if you want more control, um, you can use the square tool here and actually click and drag exactly where you want your residential your uh, different zones to be. Now, it's a good idea to put shops near your residential zone, but just note that your um, your commercial zone does produce a bit of noise, so you don't want to have giant chunks of re uh, of commercial zones near your res uh, near your residential. You kind of want to spread them out, just like you would when you in real life. We can actually do this. No, we won't do that one now. Okay, so now that we have the basic setup moving through, which is good, uh, what we do now is we can. Uh, play, speed it up a little bit, and then watch the city grow. So people are moving in, as you can tell. So the power, this is the the radius I was talking about, is increasing up, and now it's asking for water. Because what we forgot to do is we forgot to connect the water to our mains. So now you've you've done that. Now. This is very good to get you started, but we're still losing quite a lot of money at the very beginning. So our weekly income is negative $853. So what we'll do is we'll actually open up the economy tab and we're gonna drop road and water down to basically the 50%. Now there's two different toggles. There's day, uh, during the day and during the night. So just be cautious of that. It's really important when you do things like uh, different types of maps um, that require heating. It gets colder at nighttime. So the electricity tends to be used more at nighttime. For this map, it doesn't really matter. It also gives you some other uh, other information on how much tax you get for, uh, how much your income is worth for your different zones, etc., etc. But we're not too interested in that at the moment. We just want to try to save as much money as possible. Don't adjust your power because it lets you find out pretty quickly that you use your power uh, quite heavily. So now that's out of the way, what we'll do is we're actually just extend our our residential zone a bit more. I'm going to go 20 units by 20 units, and then close it, and then drag it right across. Now, now that we've now that we've got here, it's probably something also important to mention is the way that building zones, uh, buildings work in city skylines. So you have any different grids here. So obviously you have like a grid and all houses got to build up. But we've actually noticed the large, uh, the largest a house will actually be is four by four 
grid. That is the largest a single house will ever be. It won't also, it'll never be longer than four. It'll always be a maximum of four height and then four, four inside. But it can, you can go single four or two. It can be smaller than four, um, but it's just important to note. And that's the reason why when you do a grid like this, such as here, so that's a 10 by 10 by 10 by 10. When you have a look, it actually divides it perfectly four and four. So if I do in commercial zone, we see that's perfect four by four. So that's um, just taken in consideration when you start planning a bit. Now we don't, so I'm just gonna leave it like this. So have our houses, houses built, up, built up a bit more. You don't need to like completely box, like there's no necessarily need to do to move it across. Um, there's no need to do that because it's it's irrelevant. Um, it's just it really just builds up to different traffic situations. So that should be enough to build the city up probably pretty quickly to our next milestone. So now we can see that our money's the money we're spending is is decreasing, which is good. Well, the income that we're getting is is increasing, which is good. Do do do. So obviously down here as well, you have your different um, like ROIs is what they call. Um, and it just gives you an increase, uh, an idea of how much demand is, is, how much demand is for certain things in your city. So in this case, they're asking for a pretty high industrial, and I agree, haven't got a lot, so I'll just extend this out again another twenty. Oops. And do it again. But remember, when you start it, you have to give them some water. Otherwise, they're not going to be too happy. So now we've started this, oh, this, this sign here just means that the connection itself doesn't really, um, there's nothing connected to the other end, which is, we can probably do it and get rid of it, but it really means nothing. And now our cities continue to grow. We're almost hit, we'll hit a new milestone soon, speed it up. And that's essentially how I start my cities. Um, it's good. actually connect the water up. It's good to um, start your city off small. You can always redo this later on. So you know, if you don't really like the layout that you have, that's fine. You can just adjust it later. Um, probably something to want to take a note here is when you click on different items, such as uh, your water or electricity, it actually gives you an idea of how much uh, how much electricity is currently being used, like consumed, and um, and how much is available to you. Now we're actually starting to see we start to decline and see these buildings here start to lose power. So this is when we go back over to our our turbines and turn on our second line. So now if you click back on here, we have 12 megawatts insert and 12 megawatts available. And then everyone's happy. Speed it up. Doo -doo -doo. And then now from here you basically just continue going whatever way you please. a bit of low in power and that's because we didn't really sit it in the best uh, position ah there we go so now we've actually leveled up so hey we've congratulations you move to the next uh, next stage and then you have all the different additional unlocks so this stage here gives you different taxes loans garbage healthcare etc etc so when that happens it'll also it doesn't matter what speed you want it'll also speed it slow down it'll slow you down game your your gain down to one section um and then from and that's that's how you start a city so from here, you do things such as increase your commercial zone, your commercial zone, residential zone, and industrial zone. But this is a good way to to begin to make sure to give you on that the right uh, the right start of city building. 